Grace and peace in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. On behalf of the entire St. Stephen's Church family, I welcome you to online worship at St. Stephen's United Methodist Church in Burke, Virginia. I'm Rob Robertson, one of the pastors here, along with John Kim and Forrest Teague. We are honored that you would join us for the service of worship for Sunday, June the 14th. It is Graduate Recognition Sunday, and we will celebrate with a slideshow during our offertory. If you are a guest, we want to especially welcome you and welcome you to St. Stephen's in this time of worship and encourage you to get connected to the life and the ministry of St. Stephen's Church by visiting our website or signing up for our email list or also checking us out at Instagram, Facebook, and on Twitter. If you would like an order of worship for today's service that includes lyrics and liturgy, you may visit our website. I want to thank everyone that was part of our uh, service of prayer for racial healing for our land on Wednesday evening. Thank you for being part of that uh, special time together. Also, see Monday's email for more opportunities for prayer and action and discussion at St. Stephen's concerning racial justice. Father's Day is one week away from today, and you are encouraged to share a picture of your father for a slideshow next Sunday. Those are due at noon on Tuesday. If we can be of service, please do not hesitate to give us a call. Again, thank you for worshiping with us. And now we prepare our hearts and our minds for the worship of Almighty God. Please join me now in call to worship. Rejoice, people of God. In Christ there is a hope and peace. But, but how, how can, can we, we rejoice? rejoice? The, the world, world is full of, of hunger, hunger, agony, agony conflict, conflict pain. pain. Rejoice, people of God, for in God there is justice and love. God is the source of everything. But, but how? The, the problems, problems are big. big. And, and the injustice, injustice was overwhelming. Rejoice, people of God, for in you Christ lives, and all things are possible. Rejoice! We, we are God's tools of justice and love. Through God, we, we can work for peace and feed one another.
please join me now in our opening prayer. Holy God, Spirit of love, come from the four corners and renew us. Chase away our doubt and light a fire in our words and deeds. Holy God, fire and dove, come to your church, inflame our compassion, enlarge our witness, and stretch our hospitality. Holy God, breath of joy, renew our worship, touch our hearts, and bring us peace. Amen. Now it is time for children's message. Hello friends, I hope your family are staying very healthy and safe. And how do you feel about that? School is over, now it is a summer vacation. Although many things are still not normal, but there are so many great ways we can have a great vacation. And I know some of you would visit your grandparents in different towns or different states. Maybe some of you would go to beach and have some fun time to enjoy swimming and sunshine. And maybe some of you would do just have extra fun time with your family and brothers and sisters at home. If I have to find one of the reasons I like summer is to wear sunglasses everywhere. Because if I wear sunglasses, I look cool. How do you think? It makes me to feel better and I can see all the things very well, even under very strong sunshine. I'm excited about summer, but still I'm sad because we have missed so many great things since the church building has been closed and you had distance learning at home. So I just brought some of the Easter eggs because the church has collected so many eggs before we close the church building and we have lots of candies and lots of toys inside, I just want to share some of them with you. You ready? I have this yellow egg and you want to see what I have? Oh, I have stickers here. What about this blue Easter egg? Hmm, I have a frog and maybe some of you know that frog stands for as St. Stephen's fully rely on God. Oh, what about this yellow Easter egg? Hmm, I have Easter stamp. Oh, you want to see one more? Oh, what about this purple Easter egg? Oh, I have eraser and the stickers. Ooh, let me see what else do I have. Oh, I have another glass here. Oh, you know what? All the colors I thought is wrong. Oh my gosh, I have orange instead of yellow, and I have a pink instead of what color I told you. Oh my God, I was so wrong while I was wearing my sunglasses, and with my eyes now I can see better, and I can see the real color of this Easter eggs. Oh, I feel so bad because I was so wrong when I see these things. You know what? Our whole society is hurting these days, and God is also suffering because the world God created is suffering now. And some people wear their own glasses and they see the whole world in a different way, not through God's ways. My favorite book, the Bible, B-I-B-L-E, tells us and gives us this lesson. From Proverbs 15:3, it says, the eyes of the Lord are in every place, keeping watch on the evil and the good. Oh. We really need to have God's eyes. Mm, you know what? I have really, really bad eyes. So sometimes I don't recognize you if you are in this place in the church building. So sometimes I feel like I need to wear real glasses so that I can see better. And I see this kind of glasses are God's eyes. As we see the world, we need to put God's eyes on us so that we can really see very well and we will know that what is right and what is wrong and what is good and what is bad from God's eyes. Maybe we do not need the real glasses like I need for my eyes, but if we know so well about the Bible and what God is telling us in this Bible, we'll be able to see what is right and wrong and we can do all the good things for the whole world and we'll be able to see the great beauty in every single person because God created 
all the people in his great image, and God equally loves everyone. And let us put our hands together for our prayer. This is echo prayer, so please repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for loving us. Help us to see the world through your eyes and help us to share your love with everyone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us go before the Lord now in prayer. God, you have given all of us grace. By this grace, we are washed clean of all sin and brought into your presence and family. You instill in us the Holy Spirit, who by their power we, ordinary people, just as the disciples were, are able to do extraordinary things. By your grace and the power of the Holy Spirit that lives within us, we are called to share the gospel, heal the sick, live in peace and truth, and by our words and actions, bring others to know and live in a true relationship with you. Lord, your spirit changes us. So let us be humble enough to recognize that we all need to change. That the ways we were living before are not conducive uh, to the fullness of life you are calling us to, O oh God, by the sacrifice of Jesus. With your spirit dwelling in us and leading us, let us not be a silent church. When the world goes crazy, when friends and families start down dark paths, and when injustice arises. Let us as the church stand up for truth and love by you, God, and your holy word. And by believing and trusting in the power of prayer that it goes before all things, Lord, lead us to your presence for counsel, so that we know in all that we do, we are doing it in accordance to your will. And that going before us in prayer is the power of God. And so now as we stand with our black brothers and sisters who have and are still being oppressed, we ask that we would know your will more clearly that we as a church see how to be and the best support and how to best speak out by word and action for justice to be done on the, on the behalf of not just Ahmad and George and Brianna, but all of our black brothers and sisters whose lives have been taken. Let us be filled with your spirit to stand up for justice. And Lord, we pray that you would protect those who are protesting and give them guidance and peace when is needed so that their message comes across and is not just the violence that is seen. But God, we also pray for our leaders and the police that are out there on the front lines that they would be safe while they find themselves in harm's way and under fire. Ultimately, Lord, we pray that peace and resolution reigns over all of this. That you, and by only you, will bring about understanding and justice to this world. Lord, rejuvenate us with life that is filled with the Holy Spirit, bringing joy, peace, and love. Take us deeper into your holy word in our own disciplined time when we are at home, so that we may live our lives by your commandments. And do not let us neglect the power of your Holy Spirit given to us because it changes lives and changes the world. And God, we pray all of this, knowing that you hear us and you answer us, God. And we do this as we follow in Jesus' example of prayer to you, knowing and praying now the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, we lift up to you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. It is now the time where we get to practice the spiritual discipline of giving back to the Lord the gifts that he has given to us. But today we have a bit of a special offeratory in which we get to see slides of our graduates, everywhere from high school seniors to college seniors to people with their master's or doctorate. We are so happy to celebrate with you in this special time. So let's go before the Lord now in prayer to pray over our gifts of our time and offerings. Almighty God, we give thanks for the gifts you've given us of life and of the many blessings you've bestowed upon us in this life. So we lift up to you those lives that we celebrate here and now, graduating and moving on to a new chapter. We give you the utmost thanks for their presence here in this church and that they would find themselves connected here even after graduation. And so, God, now we give back to you the gifts that have helped bring these people to this place and help this church be an example in its community. So, Lord, take these gifts, transform them by the power of the Holy Spirit so that we may be a transforming church here in this community and as we go out to colleges and schools and jobs and friends and family all across the world. Amen. Our lesson today from the book of Acts is a continuation of the episode in the life of the early church that actually begins in chapter 3. It is there, Luke tells us, that while going to the temple in Jerusalem to pray one afternoon, Peter and John meet a beggar, a man who was born lame. The man asks them for alms, and Peter tells the man, look at me. 
And when the man fixes his attention upon Peter, Peter and John, Peter says, I have no silver and gold, but what I have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, stand up and walk. The man's ankles and feet are made strong. He jumps up and begins to walk. He enters the temple with Peter and John, and he is walking and leaping and praising God. The people of the temple recognize him. They recognize him as the man that they knew who has been sitting for years and years begging at the beautiful gate, the entrance to the temple. And the crowd rushes to them and is filled with wonder and amazement and is utterly astonished, much like on the day of Pentecost, to address the people's amazement, Peter begins to preach and tell the people in whose name the man has been healed. Peter begins, you Israelites, why do you wonder at this and why do you stare at us? As though by our own power or piety, we have made him walk the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus. And by faith in his name, his name itself made this man strong. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him perfect health in the presence of all of you. This amazing scene gets the attention of the who's who of Jerusalem. And it is here that our reading begins as Peter continues to speak with the crowd. As we prepare to read God's word, we pray for God's illuminating grace. Please join me in our prayer for illumination found on your screen. Come Holy Spirit, Fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in us the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and we shall be created and you shall renew the face of the earth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our scripture reading comes from the book of Acts in the fourth chapter beginning at verse 1. While Peter and John were speaking to the people, the priests the captain of the temple, and the Sadducees came to them, much annoyed because they were teaching the people and proclaiming that in Jesus there is the resurrection of the dead. So they arrested them and put them in custody until the next day, for it was already evening. But many of those who heard the word believed, and they numbered about 5,000. The next day, their rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, by what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked how this man has been healed and to all the people of Israel and that this man is strong before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that, you, that was rejected by you, the builders, it has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and realized that they were uneducated and ordinary men, they were amazed and they recognized them as companions of Jesus. When they saw the man who had been cured standing beside them, they had nothing to say in opposition. So they ordered them to lead the council while they discussed the matter with one another. They said, what will we do with them? 
For it is obvious to all who live in Jerusalem that a notable sign has been done through them. We cannot deny it. But to keep it from spreading further among the people, let us warn them to speak no more to anyone in this name. So they called them and ordered them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered them, whether it is right in God's sight to listen to you rather than to God, you must judge. For we cannot keep from speaking about what we have seen and heard. After threatening them again, they let them go, finding no way to punish them because of the people. For all of them praised God for what had happened. For the man on whom this sign of healing had been performed was more than 40 years old. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. As Peter and John and the man who was healed gather at Solomon's portico praising God, a great crowd of people rushes to see them. They want to see up close and personal the man who is now walking and leaping about. They also want to see Peter and John who have brought this healing in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hearing and seeing the crowd, the apostles teaching, the who's who of Jerusalem, the priests, the captain of the temple and the Sadducees break through the crowd to put a stop to the gathering. Luke tells us that the Jewish leadership was much annoyed because the men are teaching the people and proclaiming that in Jesus there is the resurrection of the dead. A showdown between the apostles and the Jewish council in Jerusalem begins. The first break from Judaism for the earlier followers of the way happens as the leaders arrest Peter, and John. These annoyed are the same leaders that had tried to control Jesus' life by snuffing it out. They're the ones who had arrested him and tried him. They had collectively sat in council and condemned Jesus, handing him over to be crucified. Before this very same council, Peter and and John are summoned the next day for interrogation. The who's who of Jerusalem's political leadership grows for the interrogation. As now Annas and Caiaphas and John and Alexander and all who were of the high priestly family also have gathered. What happens next is a confrontation between the powers that put Jesus to death and the power that raised him to new life. Resurrection is but an annoyance for those who would use the power of death in their attempts to snuff out the living presence of the power of God. Interestingly, the leaders do not question the man's healing. They and all the people know that the man has been healed. The leaders want to know the source and the authority of the power that healed a man crippled from birth. By what power or by whose name did you do this, they ask. Implicit in the question is the understanding that the apostles did not perform the miracle by their own strength. But the leadership is concerned for potential emergence of a, of a rival, a rival power or name or a new Jewish sect that might threaten the status quo. The leaders do not even assume or even consider that this miracle could be, could have happened by the power of God. As Peter responds, Luke explicitly tells us for the first time in Acts, Peter is filled with the Holy Spirit. 
Of course, we know that this isn't the first time that Peter has been filled with the Holy Spirit. Peter was filled with the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. He had stood up in front of the crowd and told them that the coming of the Holy Spirit was a fulfillment of ancient prophecy. And the launch of the, the Christian church was the beginning of a new era, one in which everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. But the Holy Spirit had also filled Peter and John as they met the man lame since birth at the beautiful gate of the temple and brought healing to him in the name of Jesus. The Spirit had also filled Peter as he told the crowd that had gathered that the man had been healed in the name of Jesus. Luke's description, filled with the Holy Spirit, serves to set Peter and the apostles apart and over against the leaders, the hoo-hoo. It authenticates Peter's testimony, but it should also be a reminder of Jesus' promise when he had told his disciples when they bring you before the synagogues, the rulers, and the authorities, do not worry about how you are to defend yourselves or what you are to say. For the Holy Spirit will teach you at that very hour what you ought to say. Luke chapter, chapter 12. In the Spirit, in verse 8, Peter says, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. Peter makes it clear that he and his fellow apostles are on a mission of healing and not hurting. He boldly proclaims the healing and saving power of Jesus to the elders and the rulers, the scribes and the priests. Peter begins by talking about the good deed done to someone who was sick. And then Peter speaks of the truth that the man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Peter did not heal the man. Jesus did. Peter freely shares the source of his power. But then he reminds the Jewish leaders that they are responsible for Jesus' death. But he also does it in a way that brilliantly shows them, the leaders, a, a new understanding and even a new path. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. Peter corrects the Jewish leaders without condemning them, even giving them a way to turn around and follow Jesus. This too is a mission to heal and not to hurt. It is correction without condemnation. Peter speaks the truth. He is honest about his belief and he gives the leadership a way to turn to the truth. The healing of the lame man in the name of, of Jesus is evidence of the power of God offered through Jesus. Even though the Jewish leaders rejected God's testimony, God acts and acts decisively in raising Jesus from the dead and enthroning him at the right hand of God. Sisters and brothers, Jesus' name has power beyond the grave because God has lifted Jesus out of the grave and has made him both Christ and Lord. All of the specifics of Peter's words are important. But before we get to those, 
there is something else that followers of Jesus need to see about Peter's words. Peter's words not only remember what Jesus taught, but they also accurately foretell how Jesus' followers today can and will respond in the power of the Holy Spirit. Peter's answers are described as boldness. Boldness. And full of the Holy Spirit, so too can we be boldly on fire for Jesus Christ. In verse 13, Luke writes, Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and realized that they were uneducated and ordinary men, they were amazed and recognized them as companions of Jesus. May it be so for us as well. This is one of the many times in Acts where Jesus' witnesses proclaim with a boldness that is rooted in the power of the Holy Spirit. With the power of the Holy Spirit, so too can the church of Jesus Christ today boldly proclaim in both word and deed a, a desire to heal and not hurt. Under the intense atmosphere of investigation and examination, the spirit bold empowerment is evidence as, as Peter addresses not just the leaders but all people as he attributes Jesus' death to the Jewish leadership, as he emphasizes that God raised Jesus from the dead and emphasizes Jesus' resurrection as Jesus' vindication, and as he shares that the message of Jesus entails salvation, including restoration and wholeness. And last but certainly not least, the Jesus message is necessary for God's purpose for the whole world as Jesus saves. In our world today, it is important to be clear about the source of our power, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You and I are his ambassadors and apart from him, we can do nothing of any lasting good. As his followers, it's important for us to speak about the source of our power and to be honest with others about our reliance on Jesus. Our effectiveness comes from our connection to Jesus Christ. And there is nothing about him that we need to cover up or feel embarrassed about disclosing. And in the fullness of the Holy Spirit, we should be as bold as Peter in proclaiming, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Something new was happening in Jerusalem. After all, 5,000 people are converted. And Peter concludes his speech to the council with the words, there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. Now these are strong words that may seem overpowering to some, but our salvation is not found by our religious authority, our ethnicity, our political connections, our social status, our piety, or our doctrine. Salvation is in the name of Jesus. There's a nuance in the original Greek that is lost when we translate into English. The word for save at the very end of this verse 12 can also be translated healed. So what Peter is saying is there's no other name under heaven by which we must be healed. 
the, wor the world needs a, a message of healing and hope. And as Jesus' modern-day disciples, we remember that it is in Jesus that God is building God's kingdom. Isaiah prophesies in chapter 35, verse 6, that in that day, the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the speechless shall sing for joy, for waters shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. This is exactly what is happening in our lesson today. A new day, yes, a new day is even now breaking into our world. Church, can you see it? Jesus' disciples boldly in the power of the Holy Spirit are called to look for and to work for this kingdom and to stand with Jesus, the cornerstone. About this cornerstone, let me close with a reading from Psalm 118, beginning at verse 22. This is the verse that Peter uses in his testimony to the council. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us light. Bind the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Now hear this, our affirmation of faith. We believe in God who brings forth life from death, joy from sorrow, blessing out of disaster, who meets us behind our closed hearts and speaks a word of peace, who is known in the simple act of breaking bread, gathering around a table, who never forgets our name, who feels our pain, who renews our lives from the inside out. We believe in the risen Christ, who bears wounds, so that we might not hide from our own, who is present to us in our loneliness, our fear, our doubt, who embraced the hard questions, faced death door, and walked ahead into every experience, so we might know we have a companion on the way. We, we believe in the Holy Spirit, Spirit who, is who is as close to us, us as the air we breathe, who inspires the church to be a beacon of light, an oasis of peace, and a fountain of joy, who blows free as the wind, touching souls, chasing away the blues, setting loose an alleluia, we shall live as a people of God. Our closing song is Be Thou My Vision.
thy presence my life be thou my wisdom and thou my true As we leave our time of worship, go in the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Go in the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, now and forevermore. Amen.